come together to present you the theory of magnetics. And to me, to my right, there's Wei Qi, Joel, Jonathan, Window, and Jinke, and me, myself, really. So, enjoy. Okay, hi guys, welcome to the theory of magnetism. Okay, so for the first question is, what is magnetism? Magnetism is actually an object's response to a magnetic field. So the response usually comes in the form of a force. So for magnetism, there are actually three types of magnetic, uh, three types. So the first one is actually called diamagnetism, whereby an uh, object is placed near a magnet, you will actually repel away from it. So examples of diamagnetism is actually water, wood, and organic compounds. So the next one is actually paramagnetism, whereby let's say if you place an object near a magnet, the object gets attracted towards the magnet. And the last one is actually ferromagnetism, whereby when an object is placed near the magnet, it also gets attracted towards the magnet. So you can ask, what is the difference between ferromagnetism and ferromagnetism? Well, actually, ferromagnetism is a thousand times stronger than compared to paramagnetism and diamagnetism. So we can always classify diamagnetism and paramagnetism as non-magnetic materials. While anything that lies under ferromagnetism, we will usually classify them as magnetic materials. So for ferromagnetism, the examples are actually iron, nickel, cobalt, or actually rare earth elements and the alloys that include them. We will now be talking about the polarity of the magnet, and this is a picture representation of a magnet. The magnet mainly has two poles, the north pole and the south pole, which are located, located at the two ends of the magnet. Now we will talk about the three laws of magnetism. Firstly, light poles repel. As shown in the diagram, there are two soft poles repelling. Next, a light poles attract. As you can see, one is the north pole and one is the south pole, and they are attracting each other. Thirdly, when a piece of magnet is suspended free by a string, the magnet will align with the earth magnetic field. Okay, hi guys, we will be doing on the polarity test for now. Okay, for this situation, you can see that there is a lone magnet and an unknown magnet. So, for the unknown magnet, we are not sure on which, what are the poles on both sides. So, okay, let's say for this situation, if we get the south pole and that unknown pole, one of the unknown pole, and they attract, we can form one of the law of the magnetism, we can prove that this is a law. But let's say if this is a, if this situation, if the south pole and the unknown pole, they both they repel, from another law of magnetism, we can prove that this is a south pole. So from there, and find out what are the poles of the magnet. Okay, so let's say you have an unknown object and you don't know what it is. So if you see that one side of it repels, you can assume that it's a magnet. But if the both sides attracts, it's a magnetic material. What happens if nothing happens? Well, if nothing happens, that means there are no attraction, no repulsion, and uh, we are, it's a non magnetic material. Let's we'll talk about magnetic induction. So when you put a magnetic material near a magnet, the magnetic field strength of the the magnetic fields of the permanent magnet will cause the magnetic material to be induced, have, causing it to have polarity. So as unlike poles attract, right, it will it will induce a north pole here and a south pole at the end, and it will continue until it will keep on continuous continue. So as the permanent magnet, as the magnetic magnetic material is further away from the uh, permanent magnet. The polarity will become weaker because of the magnetic field strength. In all magnetic materials, there are tiny magnets which are represented by these small arrows, where the head is the mouth and the tail is the south. These are also called the magnetic domains. In the unmagnetized bar, which is shown in this diagram, the magnetic domains are all aligned in random directions which cancel out each other, resulting in a negligible magnetic effect. If not all the magnetic effects are cancelled out, you will result in a this diagram shows a magnetic bar, magnetized bar, where all the domains are aligned in the same direction. When all the domains are aligned in the same direction, it becomes at its strongest, which is also called the magnetic saturation. Okay, now we are talking about the storage of magnets. Magnets can be weaker if we put it side by side due to the repulsion of tiny magnets at the end of the bus. But this is a wrong way of doing it. To make it correct, we place the magnetic bar side by side with soft iron keepers at the end, as shown in the diagram. 
Hi, I'll be talking about the topic of magnetization. And the first technique of magnetization is actually stroking. So for stroking, I'll be talking about single touch first. Okay, how you actually use single touch, right, is actually you use the north pole of a bar magnet. And I will use this marker as the uh, way to show it up. So the north pole is actually the marker's grid here. And what you actually do is you place it at the end of the bar magnet. Uh, magnetic material and you stroke it downwards and you repeat this cycle for a couple of times around 10 times or 20 times so after that after you have done that you can actually lift up your bar magnet and your magnetic material should work as a normal bar magnet as well okay as you uh, so for the polarity side uh, that are actually in use right it's actually north pole if you are using north pole as a peak and south pole at another end so this is uh, it should be uh, the polarities are shown here. Okay, now I'll go to the divided touch. As you can see here, the divided touch looks much more complicated compared to the single touch. But the reason why people use the divided touch is because it's more efficient and it's actually stronger as well. So, um, uh, as you can see, the magnets, uh, you use two bar magnets for this case and you actually switch the uh, polarities around. And, well, and you can see that they are both going to this direction, in this way, in this uh, method. And the polarity step should be induced is actually south pole here, and for this, a north pole. So, as you can see that, it's more, much more complicated and they actually produce the same results, but this one produces a stronger magnet. Another way of magnetizing the unmagnetized part is through electromagnetism. So, what is electromagnetism? Electromagnetism is passing through, uh, uh, passing a direct current through the coil of wire, which is also known as a solar line. And uh, and this is a cupboard, and there's inside the cupboard, there's an uh, unmagnetized part, which is like this. Okay, when there's an unmagnetized bar, and when current is flowing through it, okay, the unmagnetized bar will become a magnet. And this becomes a knot and a soft. Why? Because there's current which is flowing through downwards, and by using the right hand grip rule, Grip? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. So, but when the current is off, and this is soft iron, this will lose its magnetism because iron, soft iron, loses its magnetism easily. Okay. But if what about if it's steel? Let's say it's steel. Yeah, steel. It's steel, and when the current is switched off, the steel will retain its magnetism, and you become a permanent magnet because steel retains its magnetism more than its soft iron. So now we have come to a demagnetizing topic. So how do you demagnetize a quantum magnet? First, heat. Through heating, you will cause the magnetic domains to lose their orientation. And so cause it to become unaligned, which the magnetic effect, effect will cancel each other and causes it to lose its magnetism. Similarly, hammering also will cause the same. So it does the same. And third, alternating current is also the most effective method. Why? First, you put a magnet inside a solenoid and apply alternating current to it. As slowly, you draw out the magnet. And this will cause it to lose magnetism. Today, we're talking about magnetic field. Magnetic field lines around a, around a magnet can be traced with the help of iron fillings. A permanent magnet is placed underneath a piece of paper and iron fillings are sprinkled over the paper. The paper is then tapped a few times so that the iron fillings will readjust themselves to the correct direction. The direction of magnetic field, or also known as magnetic field lights, can be plotted by placing numerous compasses around the, paper, around the magnet. Sorry. For the next experiment, for two magnets na placed next to one another of opposite poles, there will be no neutral point, as shown here. For the next one, for magnets of similar poles, as shown here, there will be a neutral point present. Therefore, when you place a compass at the neutral point, the compass will not point in any direction. Thank you for watching this video. No humans or animals will harm in the making of this video. <laughs> 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 oh.